Perfect. So in order to finish this second session of today, I would like to introduce Ute Bigman from Ben Gurion University of the Negev. She's going to speak about the rule of simplicity and template theories in biology and chemistry, the example of Pauline's questionable research on antibody formation. So please, Ute, welcome. Okay, wait, I have to hide you. Yeah, yeah, thank you first very much for uh, having me speak here, despite the fact that my topic is not exactly mainstream philosophy of chemistry. Yeah, I... Yeah, I start with an introduction on Linus Pauling, whom probably everybody of you know already, one of the most um, famous chemists, at least American chemists, in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, Pauling uh, rebuilt chemistry on the new foundation of quantum physics, for example, by contributing to the nature of the uh, chemical bond and so on. Uh, and since the late, late 19, 1920s, he became a pioneer in the physical chemistry of biological macromolecules, in particular proteins. And uh, so he uh, discovered uh, two stable conformations, alpha helix and beta sheet in 1951, and received the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1954. And here this picture shows him together with the alpha helix. Uh, Pauling was guided throughout his work, uh, working life by a few basic beliefs, among them that biological specificity, that is the specificity of individual organisms, species, etc., et has a molecular basis, namely the three-dimensional shape of proteins. And second, uh, relevant for here at least, uh, this, that this three-dimensional structure is created by molding to templates uh, that can be other proteins, antigens, or genes, uh, and that the amino acid composition or sequence is not relevant. Um, what is relevant here uh, also is Pauling's scientific personality. Uh, he was known, sorry, known to persistently pursue what became his major achievements, but with the same persistence, he also hel held on to ideas that turned out to be questionable or mistaken. For example, his claim about the beneficial effects of very high doses of vitamin C. And so uh, Max Perutz, uh, his student, uh, who admired Pauling very much otherwise, he uh, thinks that um, this was related to his greatest, uh, I cannot really see this because all these things is, are covering it. Um, uh, so that is related to his greatest failing and that is his vanity. Uh, Pauling's work on antibody formation is another example of his clinging to refuted ideas. My goals here are threefold, to examine the role of, or the roles of philosophy, psychology and scientific belief in Pauling's antibody research and his, its irreproducibility. Second, to point to different approaches of biologists and chemists in immunology. And third, to show that the distinction between template theories as chemical and selective theories uh, as biological is unsustainable. I start, um, uh, my first point is Linus Pauling's theory of antibody formation and his claims of artificial antibody synthesis. Uh, the founder of immunochemistry uh, was uh, Paul Ehrlich. He also uh, brought forward the first uh, theory of antibody formation, uh, which was called select a selective theory in which cells have preformed specific receptors or antibodies that combine with toxins. As you see here in the pictures, um, uh, this, um, uh, when there are many uh, toxins and many antibodies, they are released into the blood. Um, a few years later, uh, te template theories or instructive theories pushed the Pauling theory into the background. And according to these theories, the antigen directly modifies the structure of a normal serum protein to confer upon it the appropriate specificity. And um, uh, and selective and template theories 
both of them were not based on direct experimental evidence. Uh -huh. Okay, um, in 1940, Pauling brought forward his theory of antibody formation. And as you can see in this picture, which is from his paper, uh, it was a template theory. Uh, the, uh, when you look at the middle column, you see a thread that is, uh, uh, represents a polypeptide chain. Uh, and when it meets an antigen, the uh, thread, that means uh, the polypeptide chain, coils up from its end ends and uh, assumes a configuration, that's what Pauling said, we would today say a confirmation, complementary to the to surface regions of the antigen. Uh, the, he, Pauling's belief was, unlike that of other uh, uh, um, immunologists, uh, was that a polypeptide chain built from the same amino acids with the same sequence can form any kind of specific antibody. Uh, in this paper, Pauling also suggested a method of artificially producing antibodies from globulin solutions, um, starting with the denaturing of globulin and so on. And uh, less than two years later, he uh, released a press statement announcing success of his anti antibody production method that uh, as a new method for the use in the fight against disease. And uh, a month later, Pauling and um, Dan Daniel Campbell uh, claimed successful production of artificial antibodies in two papers in Science and in the Journal uh, of the Medical, uh, American Medical Association. But um, early attempts, mainly by colleagues and people who knew him, uh, to reproduce Pauling's results were unsuccessful. Most colleagues did not publish their criticism, but criticized him privately and in expert opinions. Younger scientists, some of them, published their criticism and the US Patent Office, to which uh, Pauling had uh, um, submitted his, uh, his method, um, decided that the claims, his claims rejected for lack of utility. So there were no um, antibodies. Uh, Pauling's own attitude was uh, to become silent. He um, abandoned his patent application. He began downplaying the importance of uh, arti artificial antibodies in his work and stopped pro working on the production of antibodies. But he ne never disavowed his experimental papers, uh, not to speak of, of retracting the papers, but retraction was not so common at this time yet. And he also encouraged his postdoc, um, Frank Dickey, to investigate the production of specific non-protein adsorbents through a template method. Uh, and here again, uh, in the first years at least, no success was reported by others. Uh, this is just um, to show you uh, that Pauling's paper, mainly the one of 1940, but also the one of the production of antibodies, has, had been, has been cited until today and most um, uh, strongly from the 1990s. Uh, and it, I checked many of the papers and uh, the papers did not criticize, most of them did not criticize Pauling, um, but praised him as a pioneer of a new chemical technology, namely molecular imprinting. But uh, I'm not talking now about the reception of his paper, but uh, that would be a different um, uh, topic. So I come to my second point, philosophy and psychology, the rule of parsimony and template theories. Uh, Karl Landsteiner was an eminent uh, immunologist or you know, immu immunochemist. And uh, he also um, brought Pauling into um, uh, immunology. And he, uh, it was he who introduced the simplicity principle into uh, this field. Uh, because he considered the number of hypothetical substances in Ehrlich selective theory uneconomical. Landsteiner was influenced by physicist philosopher Ernst Mach, 
uh, both of them came from originally from uh, Vienna. And uh, Pauling uh, himself again was um, influenced by Landsteiner and he asked um, as a re result of his reflections on antibody production, he asked what is the simplest structure which can be suggested for an antibody molecule and what is the simplest reasonable process of formation of such a molecule. And uh, the answer he gave you already saw in the paper, uh, in the picture which I showed before, the answer was that the shape of the two ends of a globulin molecule is instructed by that of the antigen so that the molecule becomes a specific antibody. Um, yeah, Pauling's and others template theories were very popular in immunochemistry for decades. And this was because they were simpler and more economical than Ehrlich's theory of random anti antibody formation because only the required antibodies were produced. In Ehrlich's theory, all the possible possibilities of antigens had to be anticipated. And people thought this is simply so uneconomical that nature cannot have done something like that. And they were reinforced by the demonstration that specific antibodies would even bind artificial antigens. Lanchana produced artificial antigens and saw that still specific antibodies would, would be bound. And third, uh, the template theories were aesthetically much more appealing than the, abstract, uh, than the um, uh, selective theories. Just to uh, make a few remarks on the rule of parsimony in chemistry, which has been beneficial in, in many, many fields, as Alan Rock uh, um, demonstrated um, for uh, work on atomic weight and molecular formulas, where simplicity assumptions were extremely important. Um, and Roald Hoffman said the, the same. Um, when he spoke of the utility of Occam's razor in the selection and classification of reaction mechanisms, uh, referring to William of Occam, a um, medieval philosopher who introduced the parsimony principle in, for many fields. And uh, Hoffman uh, thinks that intuitive is the best characterization of the law of parsimony because intuition figures prominently in the strong pull on us towards the simple, the logical and the beautiful. And he thinks that it is also intuition that sometimes leads to the oh so many blind, blind allies, if not mistakes of our sciences. And I think Pauling's example is just very well fitting to this statement. Um, so the, a few words about, about the uh, attitude of biologists or biomedical scientists. Um, they uh, were, became increasingly critical of the, um, of the template theories because they said these uh, uh, immuno, immunochemical template models are unable to provide answers to uh, fundamental biological questions concerning immunology. Uh, for example, that antibody formation persists in the absence of antigen, that the second exposure to antigen results in enhanced response, and that there is an immunological tolerance of self-antigens. It cannot be, all of that cannot be explained by or contradicts even uh, template theory. And um, here, we, uh, new theories were promoted by more bi biological or chemically oriented uh, immunologists. Most importantly, uh, Niels Jana's theory, Niels Jana was a Danish um, immunologist, uh, which was also a selection theory like Ehrlich's, but with an updated version of, of, of genetics. And here in this selection theory, um, uh, uh, he spoke of genetically preformed antibodies. And McFarlane, McFarlane Burnett uh, transformed this into a clonal selection theory. And he uh, made, uh, sh showed, or he, he said, that by taking Janus Darwin, Darwinian mechanism as the point of departure and replacing molecules with cell clones in their membrane receptors, the whole picture fell into shape. And it is somehow also clear that at least at that time, 
chemists would not think of Darwinian mechanisms in the body. Um, so as a result, uh, we have a decline of template theories, not only in immunology, but also in other fields like enzyme synthesis, in favor of, in all, all the cases, of genetically predetermined entities. But irreproducible uh, uh, template procedures still persisted. Uh, for example, in, uh, uh, in, in Schulz's work on uh, catalytic um, antibodies, which also uh, were shown not to be uh, specific, and in, in many other cases, which I don't want to talk about now. Um, yeah, now to. Uh, yes, uh, I come to my last point the uh, chemists versus biologists, the misleading comparison between template and selection. Um, I wrote an, and submitted an article on uh, Pauling's uh, antibody work. And one of the reviewers said, um, okay, what happened was that template is something that chemists used and selection is something that biologists used. You, you or I cannot blame Pauling for, for mistakes because that's what, uh, it's a discipline specific mistake. And I disagreed, of course, uh, and for the following reason. And um, it is true that chemists preferred and still prefer templates, but uh, the terms simply don't relate to equivalent theories. Biologists do not do not uh, uh, did not suggest a different mechanism for the recognition of antibody and antigen than chemists, but looked at other aspects of the immune response. And chemists studied interactions between the two molecules, but they completely overlooked biological aspects of the immune response. So it is not um, the, the fact that Pauling's papers were not reproducible, has nothing to do with a discipline specific um, uh, uh, approach. And in, in both disciplines, reproducibility certainly was a high um, value. Five minutes, Ute. Yeah, thank you. I have to struggle here because always the end or the beginning disappears. So, so the um, term template has a double meaning. Uh, in addition to that, uh, complementarity uh, interaction between uh, surface regions of antibody and antigen that has not been controversial, but uh, the generation and second, the generation of specific antibodies shapes by way of instruction of a three-dimensional template, which is highly controversial. That is uh, also, we have to uh, differentiate between that. And third, the term selection for antibody um, creation is flawed because selection alone does not specify a mechanism of antibody creation. It only relates to uh, pre-existing ones. And only when molecular biologists showed that antibodies are genetically coded for and differ in their amino acid sequences, did selection become related to uh, a mechanism. So I am not talking about that, the templates in, in biology, which is very interesting, but uh, I come to the summary. Um, sorry, this uh, First point, uh, simplicity, parsimony, and aesthetics. The example of Pauling's antibody research shows that philosophical ideas here, simplicity, parsimony, as, and aesthetic power of models can impact theory generation and interpretation and can lead to questionable research and irreproducibility, especially when promoted by prominent scientists with a lack of self-criticism, which is also explained in the following citation, which I skip. Uh, second, subjectivity, as the case of polling shows, is risky, but still it is essential for good science. And um, I want now to take the opposite stand and say a reliance on experimental data alone would have prevented the generation of the major theories in the history of modern biology and biochemistry. And uh, two examples, uh, uh, among them Pauling's concept of complementarity and molecular disease, which was really hardly guided by uh, experimental evidence, though it was important, but there were many other uh, considerations. And Crick's sequence hypothesis of DNA, the importance of DNA sequence, 
that finally became the basis of big data genomics today. Only very few um, uh, um, experimental data. And third, uh, I end with an outlook uh, on the simplicity principle in biology. There are diverse views. The uh, theoretical physicist, uh, Freeland uh, Dyson, uh, made the experience that biologists are happy if they leave the world a little more complicated than they found it. But on the other hand, there is sim simplicity in taxonomy and in particular in molecular biology. The whole of molecular bi biology started from the idea that uh, the, the simple models are models for also complex organisms. Uh, like, no, I leave the mono out. And uh, Francis Crick, then a uh, physicist turned molecular biologist, just uh, warned against this principle in biology. He said, elegance and simplicity are dangerous guides to the correct answer. And the only constraints that can be used as a guide through the jungle of possible theories are experimental tests. And entities in biology are not designed, but rather evolved. And I think the generation of antibodies is a very good example. There is no design. Thank you. Thank you, Ute. Does anyone has questions or comments? Please just write a cue on the chat. Sheriff, yes, please. What? Sheriff. Sheriff Mata, yeah, my name first. <laughs> Sheriff, you're yes. welcome. Erev Tov, uh, Ute. I don't uh, see anybody, sorry. I, I would like to see you, but I don't uh, see anybody. Just uh, stop the sharing your screen. Just stop sharing your screen. It should be... Uh, ah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Sheriff, please. Erev yeah. Tov, uh, Ute. Uh, thank you for your talk. Um, in fact, I do use uh, another mistake by, um, uh, by Pauling in my teaching of biochemistry and which is very famous, the mistake of having the phosphates of the DNA pointing inwards other than outside. That but, was a mistake, that was a mistake, but it's not what I was saying. Yes. Yeah, but, but you know, uh, I, I, uh, I teach it as something actually positive. I, I, told, I tell the students, look, I mean, even the greatest minds uh, in, in the world, intellectual minds do, do these uh, blunders sometimes. And uh, in fact, uh, we should encourage people to make mistakes because if you don't make mistakes, you're not gonna get something correct at the end. Uh, I, um, we, I totally agree with your basic uh, fundamental premise behind your talk, but we have to be careful not to um, be too harsh on our uh, predecessors uh, that made mistakes, you know, or, or went on the wrong way, you know. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for your comment. Uh, yes, I have heard this uh, remark on this criticism, if, if it is. Uh, I want to distinguish, to make mistakes is absolutely fine and to propose a wrong theory is not what I am criticizing. But what I criticize is that Pauling suggested and also published that a, a method worked. He gave the details of the method and he said it works. And he never ever disavowed this. And he saw people using it. And, uh, and that is not just a friendly mistake or something, but it misleads students, it misleads colleagues. They devote time and money on something that basically doesn't work. And Pauling should have known, but he didn't, he, he stuck to it. I mean, this is a matter of his personality. And, and many people also liked these templates. This is simply, a, for me, a very fascinating thing that until today, uh, people, uh, mainly chemists, prefer these um, instructive uh, uh, um, template theories. And this is, I think, also something we should consider when we uh, look into the development of, of, of theories, that these psychological things do play a role. But mistakes, I completely agree. Um, are not what I am criticizing. Odaraba, thank you very much. Bevakasha. <laughs> Olympia? Um, thank you, Ute. I learned a lot from your talk. Uh, I have a very silly and detailed question. You said about the when uh, Pauline presented the patent and it was rejected. 
And you said that it was rejected because of lack of utility. And it was, I was shocked because one thing is that something cannot be reproduced. So it's not, I mean, accepted, it cannot be accepted, but lack of utility in the production of artificial antibodies, why this, is, this was the, the, the um, I mean, the, the, the reason for rejecting the patent. <laughs> what, what else? But what else should they use? They tried and, and they, they, they relied on, on, on chemists around who checked Pauling's method and didn't come up with functioning antibodies. And so they said it's uh, rejected for lack of utility. I mean, the patent office doesn't uh, examine the ex exact work of, of somebody. They, reject, they, they check only the results. Why not That's lack good. of effectiveness? I would think it should be lack of effectiveness. Efficacy, yeah. Efficacy, yes. Okay. yeah. I don't know. They, they said utility. <laughs> I have said <laughs> yes, this, is, this sounds strange. This is, this is what sound, sounded strange to my ears. But mm -hmm. okay, thank you. No. You're welcome. <laughs> Does anyone else have any comment questions for Ute? So, finished? no, I think no. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much, Ute, for your time. It has been really good. We we still have a few minutes, so in order to to keep in time with the uh, with the schedule, we can wait a little bit. What time do you have there, Olympia? It's like oh, okay, for that. For may that, I, I, want... I add a comment? Yes, yeah. yes, sure. You, you, you just need to write a cue, but. First was for Satyana. I oh, did you want? Uh, just to mention another mistake by, by uh, Pauling. He uh -huh. opposed Dan Schechtman finding X-ray crystallography. Only after Pauling death, people started approving Schechtman uh, finding, which ended by his uh, Nobel Prize in chemistry. I don't think that this is correct. I didn't, under, I didn't understand Schechtman's crime. Everybody knew that Pauling loved his own theories and he was very old also at the time and that there was not a real reason to believe him. And Schechtman's work was appreciated al already before. He didn't have to wait until Pauling died, but it, it was a nice advertisement for him. The, the majority know. only later. Some of his colleagues did believe, but the majority I think only later, but I cannot swear about, about percentage-wise, anyway. No, but not because of polling. It was a very, very new thing and a, a new concept. And so people, it always takes a little while until new concepts are appreciated and, and uh, accepted, you know, but it that's, was not because of polling. That's true. Thank you. No. Uh, Farsa? Oh, yeah, I was interested. Oh, thank you, Ute, for the talk. Very, very interesting. Interesting intersection of different considerations that shape theory and, and scientific uh, behavior. Um, my question was regarding that, uh, that rise in interest in Pauling's uh, or the, the rise of citations of Pauling's paper since 1990. Um, what was it that attracted so much attention? Was it, you said, molecular imprinting? I was just wondering if you could t tell us more about that uh, that increase of citation and where that is going or where it seems to go. Look, I have a whole lecture on that, but <laughs> but I, I did not want to talk about it today because I wanted to focus on, on other things uh, in 20 minutes. But what it means basically, it's, it's a technology to molecularly imprint polymers to, again, to, to have some shapes for example, antibodies. A lot of them were, were also antibodies, but also other, other stuff. And not with proteins, also with proteins, but not only, but mainly with other, uh, other material. And um, the reason, and, and it's, I mean, it has also a different origin. It is not that Pauling started it. I mean, he, the theory is very old, but um, he was cited approvingly and some people or many people cited him as a pioneer of that field. And that I found quite uh, intriguing because what I didn't find in these later papers uh, who cited 
Pauling as a pioneer, uh, that they were anyhow critical of Pauling. I didn't mm. find, I, I know there are critical papers, but uh, I, I didn't, didn't find them. There are thousands of papers, so I, I, I can't read them all. Mainly yeah. American and Chinese papers, by the way. It is um, uh, also an interesting uh, topic. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I talked to a couple of people, of chemists, and they said so far, and that is now uh, more than 20 years uh, since they started the so-called revolution in molecular, in molecular imprinting of polymers, so far, there hasn't been an, a real industrial applications. There have been concerning small molecules, but not concerning polymers. And uh, so the people think it is simply not working the way it should work. And so something is doubtful there. But again, templates are fascinating. Yeah, it seems like it could be possibly uh, just bad history on the part, bad historical thinking on the part of the scientists just kind of grabbing a, the prestige name, uh, but yes. it also- it, could, it often happens, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, and then on the other hand, it could be uh, uh, perhaps they're thinking of the concept, the general concept of uh, template, and they're not really looking at the stages in between, um, or, I mean, is it enough? Is the com concept of template enough to inspire um, molecular imprinting, or, or is there an independent uh, source mm -hmm for that that you mentioned? Uh, molecular imprinting uses a template method or it uses various template methods. And where they all come from, I, I can't tell. But the, the basic idea is the template. That's why it's, it's called imprinting. You imprint something. And it is really, it's really, I, I understand that. I mean, you, you do something directly, not indirectly. No? And it's like the select, selective things. Uh, so templates are produced, I mean, the, the results are produced directly, no? imprinted on a template. It has great uh, intuitive uh, cognitive appeal because so yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, you're right. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Uta, for your nice presentation and the comments.